So, uh, would you believe me if this game was like in my top five of all time? No? Fair enough. Doki Doki Literature Club, a game I have obsessed over since I first played it back in 2017. And you know what? It scarred me. So if you haven't played Doki Doki Literature Club, uh, the entire game is about to get spoiled. Even some stuff in DDLC Plus. Haha, <laughs> uh, did I scare you? I sure hope I did. Okay, so here's this guy who's like really boring and he just really wants to watch anime. Now listen, the newest episode of MHA dropped in. Oh boy. Oh boy. Listen, okay, I, I get it. The girl's ego is peak, okay? That might date this video actually. But anyway, his childhood friend, Sayori, of which nothing bad happens to her, invites him to her club, which is the Literature Club. Woo! The Literature Club, yippee! Anyway, we go in and we get to meet the three other girls who are there. Yuri, Natsuki, and of course, Monica. Woo, Monica! We Yay. And oh no, the festival's coming up soon. And they won't be considered a full club without you if you don't join. No, no. So obviously you join for the fabulous literature for no other reason. Everything's normal the first couple of days. You pick out words and you hang out with the girl you like the most, making bangers after bangers in terms of poems. Until Yuri and Natsuki start having a fight about the different poem types that they make. It's actually kind of cool that not only this is like a thing of just like people have different opinions and you should respect that. Also, it's interesting how they let you just completely ignore your responsibility as the main character and just let Sayori do everything for you. Anyway, later on, you... A, a day go... Hmm, how many days? Later on, you then finally... You, oh my God. You need to spend the weekend with either Yuri or Natsuki to help them with their preparations for the festival. That's coming up soon, by the way. It doesn't really matter who you choose the, the story. It, I mean, I guess it goes into two side stories, but like you can't choose Sayori, unfortunately. The weekend goes by mostly because as I've already said, the parts with Yuri or Natsuki don't actually matter. But before that- Hey guys, it's me, Mr. Noodle. Uh, I wanted to come and bring in the facts for everybody just so that uh, because the creator of this video really, really forgot about one important scene. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, guys. <laughs> okay, so Sayori actually starts trauma dumping after you get Yuri's phone number or Natsuki's phone number. But in this case, you're seeing Yuri. So there you go. And, uh, and then she tells you everything about her depressions and stuff so that's what's happening here and then it goes into the weekend that we already talked about that doesn't really matter i mean yeah the creator talked about it not me i i'm not even in this i'm mr noodle i'm the fact checker so uh yeah mr noodle factoid mini episode part one sayori's depression <laughs> sayori catches you which whatever sayori catches you with with it <laughs> Sayori catches you with whichever girl you hung out with on that day and ends the conversation between them early. Then you go to her house and then she starts trauma dumping about her crazy depression. I mean, like, it's actually insane. Trust me, Sayori, I get it. Anyway, after that, you have the biggest illusion of choice in gaming. You must say love because if you do not, it'll make me, it'll make me sad. Anyway, Monday rolls around and uh, th there's no music. Yeah, it, it, honestly, it's kind of eerie. And then you make your way to the classroom and you see Monica alone in the club room. Um, after talking to Monica, you get to read Sayori's poems that she's going to perform today. And then you see... Uh, I guess, do I read out the poem now? Get out of my head, 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 get out of my head. Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. 
It just stops moving. Monica makes a hanging joke and then you rush to Sayori's house. After MC goes into her house, he contemplates for a little bit about what he should do and then he gently opens the door. Yeah, so, uh, Sayori hangs herself, uh, so what, what if we just try and reload the save? Oh. Uh... Okay, so you're this guy who's boring and just wants to watch anime. Listen, the newest episode of MHA dropped. Okay, I get it, it's peak. Girl's Ego was really good. His childhood friend... <laughs> His old friend Monica invites him to join the literature club. I mean, it's Monica, you can't say no, right? Right? <laughs> anyway, we get to meet the other two girls who are in the club. Natsuki and Yuri. And guess what? The festival is almost here. So obviously, you join for the fantastic. <laughs> Everything's normal and- um... Wait, what? What is- What's in the background? Is that? And what's going on with this scream right now? What's with this music? What's happening? Everything just seems off right now. You know, okay. Anyway, it seems like Yuri and Natsuki are fighting about something. It could literally be anything at this point. Uh, nothing could go wrong this time, right? Well, I was dead wrong. What the fuck is going on right now? And as the days move on, more weird shit starts to go down. Yuri becomes more obsessed with you. Natsuki's fucking crazy. Well, not really, but I mean, like, there's she's got her moments. I mean, at least she's the only other one who knows what's going on, uh, at least a little bit. What? Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Just Monica. Yeah, sure. Just, just Monica. At this point, Monica is just straight up messing with the code and completely bending different parts of the game. Like, I, I don't even know what's going on. Anymore. Oh, hey, this seems kind of normal. All right, let's uh, pick who I should help out with at the festival this time. You know, that sounds fun. I mean, Yuri's been pretty weird, all things considered. I don't really want to get her mad, so... Oh. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Yuri crashes the fuck out and kicks everyone else out of the room. And then... Oh uh, yeah, breaking out a character to mention that I, I I didn't talk about that you can go into the files to route the game and check on it, and there's like the character files and it's like a bunch of stuff. There, it has like this image for when Sayori dies, and there's also something that says have a nice weekend, and having a nice weekend we will, because Yuri confesses her love to me. Great. 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 This is fantastic. This is what I love today. This is music, and her. Anyway, it doesn't really matter what you choose, because it, she'll just stab herself anyway and just lie there. Cold dead for the whole weekend have a nice weekend I guess Well, anyway, the weekend's finally over, and now we can finally start with the festival preparations. I mean, Natsuki's, Natsuki's here, and she's got her cupcakes, and... Oh, yeah, that, make, that actually makes a lot of sense. You just saw a dead body, and... and hey, Monica's here, too, I and mean, she'll be f normal, right? Oh, okay, cool. She's just opening up the console and, and straight up deleting Yuri and Natsuki from the game. Okay. 
And then she even has the go 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 Well, Monica owns everything now. It's just Monica, if you will. Uh, we can write a nice poem about all the good things about Monica. She can tell us things that interest her, and also about how she messed with the game files and other stuff. But what if we go into the game files ourselves and delete Monica? Let's delete her. Doing that makes Monica crash and then go into a full mental breakdown. After a bit, she calms down and she's saying that she still loves you and decides to bring everyone back. Uh, but her. That'll go well, I think. Look at that. Everyone's back, and it seems like everything is back to normal, right? Your childhood friend Sayori talks about you being a neat and good for nothing, and then she tells you to join her club. Exactly like how I remembered it. Yuri and Natsuki aren't all fucked up anymore, so that's that's good. Everything's all good. And so it was fun while it lasted, but now Sayori, who is the club president, has all the knowledge of what Monica did, everything, and now she's evil. Somehow Monica interjects and just says there's no happiness here after all, and then deletes everything. Hear me? <clears throat> Hi, it's me. Um, so you know how I've been like practicing piano and stuff, and not really any good at it yet, like at all. But I wrote you a song, and I was kind of hoping that I could show it to you because I worked really, really hard on it. So yeah. Credits roll, your reality plays, beautiful song by the way. And then you get a letter from Monica saying, this is my final goodbye to the literature club. I finally understand. The literature club is truly a place where no happiness can be found. To the very end, it continued to expose innocent minds to a horrific reality, a reality that our world is not designed to comprehend. I can't let any of my friends undergo the same hellish epiphany. For the time it lasted, I want to thank you for making all my dreams come true, for being a friend to all the club members. And most of all, thank you for being part of my literature club. With everlasting love, Monica. Oh, out of character, me again. If you go through the game collecting every single like CG of the main cast, uh, you gotta go through the game three times with three different routes, and then you get the Monica CG at the end, you will get a true ending where Siri congratulates you for doing everything in the game, and you'll get a special letter from Dan Salvato. Cool. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, that was a lot. That was a lot. Let's talk about why this game is so good. So, on the horror, I think you can tell, y yeah. First off, the build-up with Sayori and, her, and the ending of Act 1, phenomenal. It's just a phenomenal, like, series of events that I think is just insane. And for a first-time player, you're gonna get freaked out every time. And the Yuri scene, too, was really well done. And I think a lot of, like, the scenes before it were, were also very well done. The way it kind of, like, changes from Act 1 being all cute and happy, and then it hard cuts to a fucked up scene for the rest of the game. It's great. Speaking of Sayori, by the way, I have a little Nendoroid of her. Look at her. <laughs> She's so cute. Anyway, let's talk about Act 2. Act 2 has so much shit. And I took from a video by Candy Yila, I think? It's an old video, but still. It has all the main stuff from Act 2 that, like, m you know, most people probably wouldn't find. Um, I'm going to talk about a couple of things that I remember finding, or just stuff that I think is scary and cool. The weird flesh screen. I don't know why this exists. It's actually kind of disgusting. Uh, the ghost screen, when you boot up the game, I'm pretty sure. Uh, this again. It's the image from the files, but 
instead it's in the game. This thing that happens with Yuri with the weird jumbled up text and then it goes like, ah! You know what I'm talking about. Monica's glitched out poem in the late portion of act two where you have to do like a really specific setup, I'm pretty sure. I don't know, that one's hard to get. This distorted menu with Sayori, which I actually remember getting on my first playthrough. Um, it's also through a specific version of the game, I'm pretty sure. A lot of the secret poems from the base game that I know I didn't talk about while I was in the story section. Those are all cool. Just put up some of my favorites from the main game that also will help out with character development for some characters. Because I know I didn't talk about Natsuki and her dad problems. That's just because it's not center stage in the story. If it was, maybe I would talk about it. And with all of that, we can talk about Plus now. Compared to the original, Plus is not scary. At least the new content is. It gets rid of some of Monica's major suspense in Act 3, but like... It's fine, because there were just so many more secrets in the game with the wallpapers, and I like the virtual machine style. I think it's cool. The secrets are everywhere. They're in the music. They're in uh, the, uh, the folders of, of the game. There's some Project Libertina stuff that gets explained from the original game. Like, it, it, so much stuff gets expanded. The main portion of DDLC Plus's content is the side stories, um, and a new banger soundtrack. And I didn't, for some reason, talk about the original DDLC soundtrack. Oh, that shit's banging too. The side stories have great art, and they tell us about the characters, I'm pretty sure, before they join the club and while they're in the club as well. Uh, I love it. The stories are very pure, very wholesome, and very story and good. I also forgot to talk about how hot the MC is in the wallpapers. Just needed to put that out there. Now, let's talk about fan songs. First, on the list, Random Encounters! Yeah! What is with this MC design? Welcome to the world of Just Monica, probably one of my favorite pieces of media on the entire internet. Well, let me tell you why. There's this guy who's in like half of the most popular Random Encounter songs. I, 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 I don't know why, he plays Baldy in another one, and he just wears the, the uniform from the game, but then he also wears like Clive's wig from Pokemon, but it's black. And I've always had this idea of cosplaying as that specific version of the MC. Don't at, I mean, I think you can tell why. I think I'm just too far gone on the rabbit hole of Doki Doki. Also, for some reason, Adriana was, was here. Like Adriana Figueroa. What is... That boggled my mind, I don't even know how many years ago. And you know what's also crazy? Is that she was also in one of the FNAF, the musical movies. Burned to ash. Guys, I could make an entire video about random encounters. If you want to see a video about random encounters, you're going to get one. You're going to get one whether you like it or not. I just don't know when I'm going to write the script for it. You've still got time. We got to talk about something, by the way. All right. Just Monica, come back on the stage. Come back on the stage. So why did you use the Roblox knife set? Yeah, I don't know why this happens. Yuri pulling out a, the, the knife and then it makes the Roblox sound. It, it never ceases to make me laugh. By the way, did you did anybody ever get their 30 day free Verve trial at the end of the- Come out up here and you know this. I, I still I just don't like Verve. I tried using Verve to watch Full Up Metal Alchemist back in middle school and I was like, this sucks. Cause I watch ads. I didn't know about an ad block. Now that I know about ad blockers, you know, I could probably use Verve. What happened to Verve? Oh, Verve merged with Crunchyroll. Oh, that. Come on out of here, Crunchyroll. Anyway, Monica is played by, uh, I mean, I guess it's pronounced Oreo, but there's a three in it. Speaking of her, she did a cover of Your Reality that was pretty good. And also is the reason why Doki Doki Forever exists. I don't really have much else to say about it. I mean, that, that song is just really good, so. Out of every fandom I've ever been in back in middle school, pff, who am I kidding? I'm still in like, I'm still in FNAF, I'm still in Undertale, I'm still in, I'm still in Doki Doki. I mean, come on, I haven't left. DDLC did not miss a single time. Let's go over some of them. Get Out of My Head by Try Hard Ninja. It's a Try Hard Ninja song. Of course it's going to be fire. I Belong With You. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute. We must tread lightly because... This one is made by Mando Pony. Now, if you're a FNAF fan, you might know who you might know who Mando Pony is. 
I could make like a Manto Pedo joke at this point. I don't really know what else to say. I mean, you know, hey, you know what? At least the characters in DDLC are 18. I don't know if this joke's gonna make. We've got Insanity, which I think might be my favorite song. It's tied with another one that we will talk about in a second. That one is so good. And out of every single one of them, it's one of the only DDLC fan songs that actually has a human person in the video next to just Monica. And do you know how good the performance is in that song? It's so good. We have Rocket Gaming. Rocket Gaming. I forgot they existed. I, I, I didn't really listen to the songs before making the script. Uh, so tell me if they're good, cause cause I don't know. Okay, now let's talk about my favorite one. Come up, come on up here. Come on up here. Look at this one. The one in control. This is the best one ever made by all. Every single song that's ever existed for DDLC, this one's the best one. Do you want to know why? Go listen to it. It's going to be in the description. Well, all of them are going to be in the description. Who cares? No one gives this one. I feel like when you when you think about DDLC, you think about Just Monica, you think about you think about one that we haven't talked about, which I completely missed. Why did I say Okie Doki? I forgot that he that there was a human person in that one. Also, I almost forgot about just to mention this one. That one was fire. Stupendium is just just it just makes good music in general. So I, re I really don't have any bad things to say about it. It's just good. Anyway, no one gives the one in control the light of day that it deserves, okay? All I'm saying is that that song is fire, and people need to accept that fact. By the way, when it comes to just Monica, I know the entire song word for word. No, I will not be making a cover of the song ever in my life. You know what? I will have to get to one million subscribers to get that to happen. One million. The day I hit 1 million, I will make a video of me fully covering the entirety of the song. All characters played by me. Okay, I don't know how to make an outro for this video, so I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna say one final thing. Um, if you guys have any, like, DDLC fan games you want me to play, just give me a list in, like, the, the comments and I'll play all of them, and then I'll make a video for December about them. I'll make us, you know what, that's my Christmas special this year. I don't care if I have other plans. My Christmas special is playing a bunch of DDLC fan games. Give me your favorite DDLC mods and I'll play them, because I really just want to have a nice time. So, uh, that's how I'm gonna end this video, so you, you know what to do. Blow this up.